Need fast, cheap, reliable MUD coins? Go to MMOXP.com for the cheapest coins on the market. And use discount code MONEYSHOT for an additional 5% off your next order. Link in the description below. Welcome back YouTubers and Madden fans, this is Mad Money Shot, sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. Got a very special video for you guys today. If you guys don't know, every month I try to put out a full free breakdown of an offensive playbook or a defensive playbook. Uh, just like I do in my ebooks, I try to give you guys a free version on my YouTube. So that's what today's version is going to be. It's also my most up-to-date playbook because it's the last ebook that I made. And that's the Pistol Playbook, the alternate Pistol Playbook. Uh, which you guys, if you follow my channel, know that I did about a month worth of uh, play and videos gameplays especially out of the pistol playbook to me it's the best running playbook in the game uh not even close i don't even think there's a, a running playbook even close to this playbook so i'm giving you guys this full breakdown for this month now this is such a big video that i split it up into two parts so if you want to see part two tomorrow make sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comment section and if you guys want me to continue to do this series make sure to hit the like button and let me know in the comment section let me know what playbook you guys would like to see next month i had a lot of requests for the packers but i went with the pistol playbook playbook because i think it's just a better playbook overall as far as the amount of stuff that i put into it because i cover just about every single formation in this book so other than that let's go and let's get right into the video the formation i'm going to go over today is the pistol full house um if you look at the personnel that you have i mean you get a tight end or a fullback here i typically go with my fastest guy which is going to be oj howard in this situation then you have uh multiple running backs you have two running backs to the you know one on kind of like the fullback side one on the uh the running back side but if you are going to throw the ball or if you want more speed and your fastest guy is a receiver all you have to do is hit the right stick where the packages are and you actually get wide receiver in the backfield which i think is pretty cool so if i go to my death chart and i go to the uh, receivers real quick um say i want you know scotty miller who's my fastest guy there all i have to do is whoever is my third receiver will be um and obviously i think antonio brown would be better but whoever my third receiver is will be the um the running back in the backfield so that's something to think about if you run a team like the kansas city chiefs or if you run a team that has you know say you're playing mutt and you have a really fast receiver when it comes to some of these passing plays it definitely helps to put wide receiver backfield i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna do that i'm gonna run wide receiver backfield here um i mean to be honest with you i'm not gonna do that because i'm saving that for a future video if you guys want to see a future video where i run this offense with tyree kill in the backfield 99 speed tyree kill in the backfield do me a favor hit the like button and let me know in the comment section because i definitely plan on doing that other than that like i said we're just going to mostly focus on the run plays today anyway uh and i'll probably um you know i'll have some passing plays on my patreon on my join now community tab so if you guys want to see that links in the description below or hit the join button um other than that the running plays the the four running plays that i typically have and when I run this offense I have pretty much all run plays in the audibles sometimes I have a few passing plays but mostly run plays uh, the first audible that I put in is the triple option switch this play here though is kind of falling out of favor for me I'm kind of I'm leaning more towards having a passing play in that spot but for this video I'll keep it because I do intend to go over it. The second play is the halfback slam, which is already in there. Uh, the counter lead, the last two plays are the most important. The counter lead, probably the most explosive run play in this formation, if not one of the most explosive run plays in the game. And then the zone read, uh, which is going to be kind of in the same vein. Uh, th these are two of the most explosive plays. So those are my four options right there. That's typically how I run my offense. The last play, I'll just pick the halfback off tackle. And then as always, this video is brought to you by my coin sponsors at MMOXP.com. If you guys are trying to get your Mutt team up, uh, you know, check them out. Link in the description below and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off. Now, as far as these reads go, because that's really where this offense comes into play. The, the two biggest plays that I'm trying to go for are pretty much always going to be the counter lead or the counter lead and the zone read. But these two plays, I don't really think this play really lends to either. I would say on a, a play like this, because there's so much packed in the box on the left side, I would probably go with the triple option. Now this play here, you can either hold the A button and hand it off to the running back uh, behind you, or you can hold it. This is typically what I do. I think I probably want a more mobile quarterback than Tom Brady too, because you can run with the quarterback, but typically I don't very often. But the the, the read that I'm definitely going to be reading, I'm reading the defensive end, the outside linebacker, and I'm going to pretty much try to make that pitch just about every time. Now you get some great pitch animations in this game, as you can see right there with the first play we're just ripping off close to a 25 to 30 yard run going to the replay real quick just to show you that pitch animation i mean this play from this point of view looks pretty dead to rights but like i said based off of the fact that the quarterback 
typically will get this pitch out even when he's tackled. That's one of the things that makes this type of play so broken is you can essentially become your own blocker because I'm taking out two defenders with the quarterback here just by holding the ball long enough that the defensive players react. So keep that in mind. I mean, you, sometimes you won't get that animation, but you typically do. You Typically, if you watch my gameplays, I get this. I get the animation where the ball comes out pretty much every time. So hold the ball to the last opportunity so you can basically take up as much defenders as possible. So here's another good opportunity to triple off and switch. I could run this to either side. Uh, and I could flip it since the formation's even. I could flip it and there's no... Um, you know, there's not going to be, the play's not going to flip and stuff like that. That's one of the things I really like about this formation. Uh, on this play, like I said, the switch, definitely a good option. You can see right there, don't really have the athleticism with Tom Brady, but um, that's something you definitely want. You definitely want like a Lamar Jackson, somebody with more speed to run this offense than Tom Brady. So that's just one of the plays. Now, in a play like this, um, the slam, when I see that gap right in front of me, the slam, I mean, that's probably the least explosive play. I think if I go back to the uh, the menu screen, though, I mean, I think my average on the, on the slam is still pretty high. Um, I don't typically do this, but just to show you guys, like I said, the, the averages on these plays, which I didn't really go over. I averaged 7 yards a carry on the slam. Um, I averaged 13.4 on the counter lead. Uh, the triple option, like I said, it's kind of fallen out of favor for me a little bit. I'm only averaging 5.8. And then the zone read, I'm averaging 9.4. So that just to give you an idea of how explosive these plays are when it comes to some of the uh, what they're capable. And then the off tackle, like I said, I don't run that as much. I only ran it 12 times, but I'm averaging 6.4. I mean, if you look at some of these plays, like I've run the zone read 166 times and I'm averaging almost 10 yards a carry. I've run the counter lead 111 times and I'm averaging 13 and a half. I mean, that's ridiculous. So just to give you guys an idea of what type of gains you can get when you run these plays. So back to these uh, plays. Now, here's a perfect opportunity for the counter lead. Whenever you see the defensive end like he is there out wide like that, that's a perfect opportunity for a counter lead. Uh, these plays, counter leads, because they develop a little bit on the slow side, can get blown up in the backfield, but it's kind of rare. Uh, but this is the look you want. You want that wide spacing defensive side of the line, uh, that outside linebacker out wide. The hope is that he takes himself out of the play. Uh, and that's pretty much exactly what he does on that first carry, uh, and we get close to 10. So that's pretty much all you're really going to do. When it comes to counter plays, I'll go to the replay one more time. Counter plays, you really are just reading this defensive end. If he crashes in like he does here, um, I mean, a lot of times you want to go outside, but based off the fact that he's so wide, it makes the read nice and simple right up the hole. But you really want to read him. Sometimes he'll crash in, sometimes he'll hesitate and stop. If he hesitates and stops, you typically want to go around him outside. So we're going to run the counter lead one more time. Like I said, this isn't necessarily the best look, but I still feel like there's opportunity. You can see how even with a tight set like that it still works out. So whenever you have a packed box look like this, it's always best just to take it outside. There's a couple of different runs you can run. The default run here, you can see we have a pretty successful run. Now, as far as the passing plays go, I definitely switch over to wide receiver backfield in the sub packages uh, to give myself a receiver at this running back spot. Uh, that's definitely going to be one of the most important things. One of the best passing plays that I find, one of the most consistent, is really two. The deep curl and the PA flood uh, fullback slip. Neither one of these plays are like one-play touchdowns or anything like that, but they're very consistent. They're very hard to stop, especially when you have a, um, a receiver in the backfield. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to replace... Um, some of these, uh, you know, plays with uh, passing plays now. I'll go with all of the deep curls, also one. And then also the last one that I use a lot is the PAX post. Uh, we'll go ahead and put that in there. I don't know if I have a fourth. I mean, there is a really good cover one, one play touchdown out of the PA comebacks and the PA flood comeback. So I guess we'll pick that. So we're looking at random nickel now. Um, and all we're really going to do is, you know, like this said, this play right here is really slowly becoming my favorite play. I feel like this RB route, regardless, I don't know why they were saying an all-out blitz. What the heck's going on here? So I would say, uh, you know, we're looking at random defenses now, by the way. My favorite uh, play is somewhere between these top three plays. Now, on this first play, based off of the fact that I have... Um, you know, it looks like an off coverage. A lot of times I'll basically just steal this Y route here. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's just something that you can just take all game. It's something that your opponent's going to have to pay attention to. And if you sprinkle it in, it can be super annoying, uh, which is one of the reasons that I do it. But I feel like the best play where if you like, if you don't necessarily have uh, the best beat on the play would be either the PA fullback slip or the deep curl. Now, this particular play right here, the, run, the RB route, I feel like it gets open against just about any defense. 
defense. I haven't found a ton of defenses that stop it. And it doesn't look like a traditional, you know, it's not a route that a lot of people um, necessarily expect. Uh, and it just, like I said, it gets man. You see how it just beats that man coverage against zone. It seems to always find spacing. Um, so that's definitely one of my favorite plays uh, when it comes to this particular formation. Like I said, it doesn't even matter. I, I, I'm just, I'm just basically planning on throwing to that guy pretty much every time. Although you do have uh, the fullback underneath is pretty good. Um, obviously, he's finding spacing as well, and then you can see that the receiver immediately turns to a blocker. So this is a very difficult play to stop, and I run that a lot. Um, I also, and I do run this a lot of times. I'll just put this guy here on a slant, like right here. It looks like we have a, a double safety blitz, which I don't know. I didn't get the ball off, but there's a lot of times where I'll just slant that guy uh, because the user is going to have to follow um, these other routes, and that'll basically leave the center of the field by the way, right here. So. Like I said, there's definitely an opportunity for that. And I do the same thing with the other play as well. I do that a lot with uh, with this play as well, which you can see is going the other way. But once the entire formation shifts like it will right here, a lot of times I'll throw the backside slant. It's just super hard for anybody to defend. This play here, I mean, this entire formation, it really takes place in about a 20-yard box. But there's so many different things you can do and there's so many different places you can go that it's just really hard for anybody to defend. It's, 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 all, it's all over the field. You're using every inch of this 30-yard 30, 30 box. Uh, and then the last play, which like I said, this is also one of my favorites. Um, this is a real easy breakdown. I typically slant the X route this time, uh, but this is a really easy play to read. I'm looking at the, the, the RB route and the Y route. The Y route here, it's really like the zone route. If I see a zone, drop it off down there. There, it came down there pretty quick. But that's typically best against cover threes, cover fours, um, you know, things like that. Uh, any, any off coverage. If it's a man coverage, though, the RB route is going to get open pretty much every time. So that's pretty much the two reads, your first two reads on a play like this, um, which you know like here it looks like a man coverage so it should be pretty easy to rub your although it looks like there's zones i mean it's almost it looks like a man pre-snap but then I'm, I'm seeing i'm seeing the zone and i've already diagnosed it. so obviously you know both of these routes can have success but like i said this table route here can steal that all game if they're not on these immediately you can steal these all game they're all quick hit pass plays uh, which is why i like it because it, it forces your defender or your opponent to be like a, to be immediate when it comes to the defense and then like i said that route right there most people aren't seeing that route coming that's not something that really has to be usered uh but most users are not sticking around for that uh which you know like i said that's what makes this this offense so hard to cover and i'm getting 10 plus every time to that flat i'm getting 10 plus every time to pretty much every route with the exception like i said the fullback slip this one here uh which is not a fullback by the way i'm um, having the most success and even there it looks like he's covered but he comes back to the ball even though he didn't catch it but like i said to me i love these three plays i love this offense here's another play it looks like we got that uh we got the full house coming i could do any number of things here i mean there's no there's no wrong answer here you know what I mean? <laughs> next up out of the pistol strong slot uh, we're going to have some run plays, so make sure you want to have either a, uh, a fast tight end at the fullback spot. You just need some speed because the fullback spot here um, is going to have uh, the ability to run the ball. So it's really up to you if you want somebody that also can block. I would say uh, putting uh, Miles Sanders here um, at the fullback might be the best option for me. Uh, so we'll go and we'll switch that. We'll put a speed back in the backfield, then we'll have uh, you know him at the, uh, the fullback spot because that spot's going to get the ball a lot. So I'm going to start off with um, a pass play, the PA Flood. The running back here is going to be uh, a pretty good check down against just about any zone coverage. Uh, cover 2 probably would work the, the least effectively, but against cover 3 and cover 4, he's pretty much going to be the play. I like the smart route and short the A route. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it's really, those are the two routes. Like right here, everybody drop back. Uh, if I run to the open side of the field, I'd probably get more of a catch and run. But it's just a quick... Uh, you know, those table routes are really good to the flat. So, like, right here, this is a cover three. You can see I can just get a catch and run, um, you know, to the sideline. That's really all this play is about. So, it's a quick hitting play. Against cover two, if you just streak the A route, um, the B route here will get open to the sideline once he gets past the cornerback, once the cornerback reacts to that shorter route. So, it's really just those, you know, that's pretty much it for this coverage. Um, the A route here, I mean, if you have enough speed, he might be able to get past that tight end. But ultimately, it's really all about the uh, the outside receiver. So I would say just bullet pass lead to the outside. Once that cornerback uh, slows down, you can see you get a really big chunk play. The next play we got is the triple option switch. We're going to pick that, pick random defense. 
This play here, if you hold A, you'll hand it up, hand it off right up the middle, but that's not really the big play. If you have a lot of spacing inside, that might be the way to go. Uh, but the best way to go is to get the pitch outside. It's basically just, um, you know, hold the ball as long as possible because the quarterback can act as a blocker or at least take away one of the uh, defenders. Uh, and when you get that pitch out, you can see you get a really good acceleration from it um, if you do it properly. And you, you typically get a lot of really good pitch animations as well uh, when it comes to this play. So I would say it's best to run this play if the tight end is wider than the furthest box defender. Uh, but it's a really good play. I think it's, it's something you can run, um, you know, even if you don't look like you have an advantage, just don't run into something. If it's too overloaded to that side, obviously you don't want to do that. If there's you know a box safety there as well as a linebacker, you wouldn't want to run that. But ultimately, this play here is really effective regardless. Next up, we got the triple option slip. Go ahead and pick random 3-4 or random 4-3 again. This is another play. You can hold the A button and hand it off inside. I find if you're going to do that, I find it's best to go, don't go straight to go, um, here's a you know double blitzing safety, so I wouldn't run this play at all, but I would find it's best to go in this direction, go the complete opposite direction, go to the right entirely. As you can see right there, even with blitzing safeties, that worked out. But the best play is going to be in this direction, as you can see right here. Once again, we get that pitch out. That's probably the most important part of the play. I would say it's best once again, most of these run plays, like this is probably a really good look here where that defensive end uh, slash outside linebacker is within the uh, reach of Goddard. He's within the, the blocking uh, position. So it's like I can just hold that ball, take out that defender with the quarterback, and we have a very consistent uh, play to that side. But like I said, you could also run it to the opposite way by holding A. But the pitch is really the play. When it comes to some of these option plays, the pitch is really where it's at. And you can see right there, Jalen Hurts turns into a blocker. So very consistent play. Next up, we got the halfback off tackle. This is another play um, where you're going to be running it to the sideline. You want to just make sure there's no real uh, need to do anything here. You just want to make sure you sprint it out. Next up, we got the PA corner halfback slip. Keep going random. I'm going against random defenses here. The A route, I really like. I think that beats man and zone uh, just like this. As you can see right here, I mean, it's if you smart route like I did there, it's an instant open route. I mean, it's you don't have to smart route that route. I find it's really good as is. Um, and then you can see, I mean, a lot of people are going to have to come out in large matching packages. So you're pretty much going to get uh, a, a, a tight end on a linebacker pretty much every time. And then, like I said, the, uh, the Y route here is a really good check down uh, against zones. Uh, won't be man though, but that's pretty much the look. I would say if I made any adjustments, I don't think that the B route here is really doing me a ton of favors. I would say putting him on a uh, a slant would be the most would make the most sense uh, because that route really doesn't, in my opinion, that route really doesn't beat anything. So you can put him on a slant or you can put him on an in route um, and smart route him about 10 yards. Uh, but it's really about, like I said, it's really about the the two running backs, the full or the tight end and the running back. This play will also uh, beat cover two man if you just or cover two zone if you just put the A route on a streak. Um, the the X route will get outside of it as you can see right there. If you just hold the ball until the cornerback reacts to the um, to the, uh, the the Y route. So basically, it's just a bullet pass lead outside, and then you can see you can have a lot of success uh, to the boundary. It's going to be even better if you run to the open side of the field, but you can see we get past a pretty pretty poor safety, but um, ultimately it's a good cover two play. Next up we got the halfback power O. This play here, I find if you have a lot of spacing, this can be a very successful inside run. As you can see, um, you know, if there's gaps, it just has a way of creating spacing. Uh, plays like this where there's like no gap, I don't really think you're gonna have a ton of success, but you can see you can still find daylight. So this power O play it should definitely be in your rotation. It's one of the better plays. This formation as a whole has more running plays than I know what to do with. Um, but you can see, I mean, it's pretty much all about, um, you know, it, you, you need adequate spacing. Like this look here, it's not going to work against this look. Um, although I can try. Like I said, you can, you can, you know, make something happen. But um, ultimately, this is going to be your look. Uh, once again, that's another bad look. Any look like that, obviously, there, there, there's no gaps, so there's no way to create space. Here's some gaps. Even with that safety coming down the box, you can see we're going to be able to create space so this play right here it's all about spacing it's all about gaps between the uh, interior line players here once again no real gaps in that direction if i could flip it and run to the opposite
opposite direction, it would probably have more success because there's actual gaps there, even though I ran it into, um, you know, I ran into some of my blockers. Uh, but that's pretty much the look. Here's those gaps. Um, I could run, I could flip this and run this the other way once again. Obviously, it, it's not ideal to flip the play because the fullback doesn't get out in front as easily, but you can flip the play. Next up, we got the halfback counter. Let's go ahead and pick that. We'll go random 4 3. It's another play where you're looking for spacing right here. Obviously, the, the defensive end is out so far that he's going to basically take himself out of the play. That's going to be the perfect opportunity for that. Now, you do have opportunity because it's kind of a slow developing play. You can see how there was opportunity for the linebacker to come through. But ultimately, this is going to be a very consistent run as long as you follow that principle of looking for that spacing uh, in the direction that's going. Here, it's not too spaced out, but it can still work out because ultimately, it's just need you just need something that's not tightly compact. Like, this is a decent look. You have the defensive end and the defensive tackle just has to be spread apart as wide as possible this one here is good enough it's not it's not the ideal look but you can see it's good enough that i can get outside and make a big play except we got the 494 f flat so to hit a one play touchdown against cover three just motioning godwin put this x route here on a fade not a streak uh, and then put the B route here on an out route and then smart route in about 10 yards. Also put the RB route on a streak. I don't know if that part's necessary, but I find it helps. Then block the running back. Uh, and this is pretty much going to be it. You're just watching for this um, this X route here uh, to basically, um, you're basically watching the cornerback. I'll go to the replay to show uh, what to look for because it looks like, um, as I did it to you earlier there, it looks like that receiver's covered pretty much up the field. But if you watch this cornerback here, um, this guy specifically, uh, he'll eventually start to slow down because he's reacting to the uh, eventual the eventual crossing route of the tight end. Why I don't know because he's so far out of position. But that's pretty much how this uh, these cover three beers work now. So the second he slows down, all I really have to do is bullet pass lead away from the safety. You can see I'm already doing it. Like I said, I'm just kind of watching for him to deaccelerate, and it's a really easy one play touchdown uh, right over the top. So let's go and let's get into it. As far as this formation goes, I put out this. Uh, series of plays probably with like three years straight i love this run play it's one of the reasons i started using the pistol playbook that and the pistol bunch de uh because this is the only playbook that has both uh but without a doubt this is all about the run plays now one of the most important things when it comes to the run plays in this formation like i said i'll give you guys some passing plays uh towards this, the back half of this video but you want to make sure that you put um somebody at this this fullback spot here typically i just go double running back so like i could go with like a mark ingram and be totally cool with that you could also go with with, like sometimes I'll use my tight end because I want somebody that can kind of block because there's two run plays so I could easily take uh, I could swap Nick Boyle here uh, and then I could go with Mark Andrews if you want more explosive run plays it's probably best to go with um, a, a running back here uh, but I'm gonna go with tight end because I, I looked into it and I think he's a pretty good uh, pretty solid addition so the run plays as far as the run plays go is really just two it's gonna be um, the halfback zone week and the second play is going to be the triple option now they also have the F league read read option uh which i could you know i could mess with that that's okay maybe i'll show that in this video but it's nowhere near the level of the other two plays so that's going to be my two run plays i'll show some passing plays here in a minute we'll go we'll start off with the triple option although i'm going to go uh random run plays anyway i'm going to figure it out on the fly to show you guys what to look for when you run these plays so we're going to go random three four we're going to give ourselves the best defense possible now as far as the reads go one of the things i like about this particular play is i could really run like i'm telling you right now based off of the look of this formation on defense i could use either one of these run plays it's really simple in the way that i broke down in the original game Gameplay, like I said, I'll have a link in the description for that. Is you're really just looking for two things. One thing, really, is your formation on defense spread or is a pinch. Because when you're playing against people online, they're going to constantly be trying to pinch to take away the inside runs or spread to take away the outside runs. So no matter what they do, you just basically counter that. Like I said, this is a default defense, so I don't really have to worry about that. I can pretty much run, like I said, whatever I want. But if your opponent's pinching the defense to try to take away the halfback zone weak, you just switch to the triple option. And the triple option has two different options. You can go to left or right. So your opponent's never really going to know where the plan is. So like I said, on this first play, though, I'm just going to go ahead and try to hit that gap. Anytime you have the defensive end out wide like, like that, and that's not even out as wide as it could be. It could be out much wider. But I'm going to go ahead and just try to take an easy five. You can see right there, my blocker completely whiffed on that, on that player. But I still got back to the line. So like I said, it's definitely a safe run. Let's do that again. Like I said, there's another scenario. I could probably go straight back to that. You can see how there, um, you know, that's, that's why you want that defensive end out wide. Because he pretty much takes himself out of the play. 
we'll go to the replay on that just to show you guys like i said anytime this guy's out wide like that obviously it's gonna be harder to run the outside runs because he's just gonna have outside leverage but when he's out wide like that he's just gonna take himself out of the play that's why you run this play when you have that look anytime that guy's out wide he's going to take himself out and you're just going to basically have a stretch run as you can see right here but it's not a stretch run where you have to get the edge it's a stretch run where you're given the edge which makes it so much easier to run so like I said here, once again, now we have a good look. It's a little bit more compact, a little bit more tight. I could definitely go triple option. I could go either way with this. So you're definitely going to want a mobile quarterback. That's why I picked the Ravens to do this. Uh, but if you're going to, there's a really easy read. I'll run the play one time, and then I'll go to the practice mode to, this, to show you guys what you're looking for when it comes to deciding whether to hold A and hand off like I did there, even though I ran it a little bit too close to the line, or whether you want to decide to, uh, to hold it with the quarterback and flip it out. Like I said, to run this play, you just hold the A button, and you hand it off to this guy. But how do you know if it's best to do that or to keep it with the quarterback? It's really simple. You're really only watching one guy on this play. Every time I run this play, I'm watching this linebacker, or if there's a safety in this, this area, I'm watching that safety. And it's really simple. This guy here on the line, he's guaranteed to get blocked. He's right in front of the offensive line. He's right in front of the tight end. This guy is the guy that can mess the play up. So that's why I'm watching him. If he gets blocked immediately, I hold, hold, hold A and hand it off. Or if I if I see a uh, my tight end or the lineman get to the next level, I'm going to hold it. And hand, I'm gonna hold A and hand it off. So here we go once again, real easy read this time. I mean, there's because there's no real, they're shifted to the left. So this is just a really easy pre snap read. I'm just taking this wide. And if that cornerback, I mean, you can go outside of that cornerback. You know what I mean? Like I said, this guy definitely has plenty of speed to run this. This is why I said you don't really need a running back there. You definitely have enough speed with the tight end to do it. So here's a good look where pretty much everything's taken up. There's no real easy read here when it comes to this play because they got the widespread alignment. There's no real gaps in the middle for the halfback zone week, but the triple option is still going to get it done. So like I said, I'm still now I'm just going to watch the def the, basically the guy right in front of Boyle, right in front of my tight end. That's going to be the read now. I don't know why they have icons on the other side, but that's never what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the, the furthest box defender outside of my tight end. If he gets uh, on his hands on him, I'm just going to take it outside and like i said you can see it's an easy play maybe a little bit more speed i could have took that for a bigger run but i'm just trying to show you the reach because the reads most important here we have a guy blitzing off that edge i don't really have gaps uh, i could run the zone week i probably wouldn't get a ton but since we have a blitzer coming off of that side it's real simple i'm just going to go to this triple option and i'm going to hand it to the running back on the other side as you can see right there now we have a play we can go both ways he really did a good job of coming back that tackle i thought i was going to get that get break that block so as far as the replay goes once again when you're going to go to the pitch side you want to make sure that you hold the ball as long as possible because your quarterback is a blocker you can see right here the guy did come off the edge so obviously i couldn't go that direction but this guy here he just gets an instant shed he's right in the quarterback's face you can run with the quarterback if nobody shows up you can hold it and continue to run with the quarterback especially if you got lamar jackson but since this guy's right in his face i want to make sure i take him out so i make him tackle the quarterback and you will get this pitch animation you can wait even longer than i did i feel like i pitched it kind of early i like to sometimes wait till he makes contact just as long as he's not completely blowing my guy up and you can see you can get that pitch out just by hitting the left bumper button and boom you're off to the races because you essentially acted as a blocker you acted as your own blocker by holding the ball long enough to make sure you take out this this free defender before you get it out to the running back and then you can see there's just nothing but space out here once again i mean if you look at as i go back to the main menu here if you look at my average uh, of running the zone week i averaged nine and a half yards a carry with that play on 88 carries like i said that to me might be the most explosive run i feel like the triple option is probably the most consistent but i accidentally averaged five and a half which is really surprising to me because to me this is a very explosive run too but then i think about it, it's because i typically run a uh a fullback or a tight end at the second running back spot if you were to put an actual running back at that spot you'll average way more and that's the reason because i have a fullback or a tight end at that fullback spot it's because that's why this has a much higher average so it's really two ways to go with it you could either try to go for this play to be more consistent because you have better blocking or you can go with this play and make it more explosive by having two running backs so it's really up to you so it's going to let's show a couple of one play touchdowns to finish this video i don't know how many of these are going to make youtube and how many of these are going to make my patreon and my join now community tab so if uh you know if i sign off and i still have plays left over they're going to all go to those uh sites so make sure to check that out link in the description below if you want to do that or hit the join button but i'm going to start off with the p 
PA crosser. This is probably one of the more uh, explosive plays. So we're going to we'll pick that. Although I do want to make sure that I have my more explosive receiver over here. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to flip these guys around uh, because the, the more explosive player is going to be needed. So let's go and let's pick PA crossers. Then on the defensive side, we're going to start off with cover three. So the most important part when it comes to beating cover three now is you have to run to the open side of the field. You need to spread this defense out. I just put out a breakdown of something similar to this. I'll put a link in the description for that as well on how to beat the new cover three defenses. I, I motion in the X route. That's probably the most important part. Motion him in, put him on a streak. That's pretty much all you have to do. The A route there is optional. I'll leave him doing what he's doing for now. Uh, but you can see that basically that um, that tight end, once he comes across, he pulls that cornerback away. So let's go and let's Let's watch the replay, although I, I jumped the gun there a little bit. Let's go, let's watch the replay. This is uh, the new cover three. Basically, these outside cornerbacks react very heavily to crossers. So you can see right here, he slows down waiting for this oncoming crossing tight end to jump all over that and the second he does that that's when you throw it to that streak because this guy here he's way out of position um you know that's basically the the whole point of running it to the open side of the field is to get this safety out of position but once he uh slows down you pretty much just bullet pass lead away i'm probably throwing it right about here once that cornerback turns his attention away i'm probably already loading up and you can see the, the throwing animation the bullet the pass lead it's really all you got to do so like i said these new cover threes man these new cover three so like i said you have options you can leave that uh, check down or you can uh, put them on a streak i find that you can do uh, either way and have success with this uh, because this guy will still react to the crossing receiver even though he's not even in the area i would say if you're playing mutt that would be the scenario where you want to streak this tight end because the idea of the streaking tight end is to occupy that safety and slow him down uh, and a streaking tight end right at him will do that but you can see how here once again guy he stops he basically freezes he turns his attention to the possibility of this guy crossing the field even though he never even gets there and never gets close he's reading that these guys are, these safeties are communicating these cornerbacks these deep blues are communicating with one another in the programming and that's why he slows down because eventually he knows that he's going to have to take over that crosser and then this guy here basically is just just gone he's just it's an easy one play touchdown this particular play is one of the better plays when it comes to doing that there's another setup you can do where you motion this guy in and put him on a streak and then put the b route on a drag now this here will give you a middle high low concept where this x route will still get open based off of the fact that that guy's still going to try to take on that crossing route but it also depends on where you run it this play is also a cover for one play touchdown. Uh, you just want to make sure you have your fastest receiver in the home run spot. So we'll just go ahead and we'll swap them around. But this play, PA crossers, going to home run two different defenses at least. So we're going to pick uh, cover four. I think the dollar has one if I remember correctly. All you have to do here is just block the tight end and put the X route here on a smoke screen. And that's it. That's all you got to do. Uh, and you just have to wait for the, uh, the block and hold up and then the B route here to basically get in side of the free safety and it's just a really easy one play touchdown as you can see even with the superstar ability of Bayard he, <laughs> lighting up he's not going to stop that play so let's just go to the replay real quick I might run this one more time but it's really simple I mean you'll have plenty of blocking in this formation um, because this uh, this guy over here basically you know there's nothing for the safeties to react to they all just kind of stop and wait and you can't do that you have to be have to you lose all your acceleration when you do that so that's why when this guy comes through uh, you know flying like a bullet they're, they're dropping back you know what I mean? Like these two safeties are reacting, but by the time he gets inside here, these guys pretty much have no acceleration. This guy has a little bit of a backpedal going, but not nearly enough to flip his hips and make a play. And that's why all you have to do is wait for him to get inside of that free safety. Once he gets inside that free safety, it's a home run right there. Once he's inside of it, I'm already throwing bullet pass lead away from the strong safety into one play touchdown. So we're going to do that one more time. The A route, like I said, give yourself a lot of blocking. Uh, this is something, this is a shot play. You're trying to take a shot. That's why this works the way that it does, because it's designed to work this way. It's not a glitch play. There's plenty of shot plays in the game that work the exact same way. This one here, you just basically create your own shot play. So that's it. That's the vid. I still got a few more plays. If you guys want to see them in a future video, a full breakdown of this on YouTube, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. But for now, I'm going to save them for my Patreon and for my Join Now community members. So if you want to check them out, you can always hit the links. Other than that, like I said, I will be doing the Pistol ebook as soon as possible because I think it's a phenomenal book. So be on the lookout for that. And that's it. Thanks for watching, man. My shit out. So since we uh, basically, you know, we got our zone beaters, 
Uh, I guess the, the next thing would be some man beaters. So we're going to go with the pearls. Now this play can really beat anything. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick uh, random for three. Now this play right here, this is another play can home run one play uh, cover three. I'll go over that in a minute. But uh, I really would like to say I want to have at least one of these receivers on a slant and one of these receivers on a streak. It's really up to you which one you want. But I really want to just pull coverage. I would say streaking the, uh, the, the X route probably makes the most sense because if it's a zone, I'm going to be hitting the Y route. My my man beaters are going to be uh, the A route and the B route at this point, um, but that's pretty much it. So here we have that man. Like I said, that tight end is going to find that inside release pretty much every time. All man beaters are the same. You just have to throw in the break. Uh, so like I said, that would be the look. Um, the running back, I can block the running back too. I'm not a huge fan of that swing route in this capacity, but like I said, any zone coverage, I'm going to take this guy out and it's going to get underneath it. You're going to have an easy catch and run because they just, you know, zone coverages don't handle those flats, but man coverages do. So make sure you don't make a poor read when it comes to that because man coverages will follow and that streak you can see right there that cornerback wanted to sit on it but based off the streak it really couldn't so that's pretty much going to be it like i said you got two man beating routes uh you got two zone beating routes here we got that man you can see the slant kind of runs into the way of it though that's the thing so in that scenario i mean it's really i would say the way i do it typically is the it, you really have to get a good read yeah i really want to make the x route both that would really be my my optimal uh, way to do it now you can also motion out this running back because he's not really doing a ton if you motion him out uh you put him on a streak because like i said the one play touchdown that i'm going to do is going to have that motion so pretty much this would be a look where you could get best the best of both worlds but you can see even still he jumps on it so it really makes the most sense to have that um you know you have to make that read you really have to make that read where uh the the x route here you're either going to streak him or you're going to uh put him on a slant for a check down against man although ultimately if you run it like this you have the best of both worlds the a route beats man the y route beats zone that's really the best way uh to do it and you can see i mean it's just you know that streak just it just pulls the flat all the way back and you got a really easy play and then like i was saying you do have one play touchdown uh capabilities with this although it's mostly against cover three you have to make sure you run to the open side of the field as always all you're going to do is put this x route here on a comeback smart route them uh, and then streak everybody else. That's pretty much it. You got your flat, which is the Y route that's still going to come into play. Uh, and then this this RB route will just get open right up the seam there as long as you have enough speed. Not sure I have enough speed with the guy that I'm using, but you see it's open there. So I'll go ahead and I'll do that one more time. Like I said, this is not necessarily the best one. The one that I showed uh, previously is probably better. But you can have success with it. So we'll go and we'll do it one more time. Like I said, it's an early throw too. It's more of a catch and run than anything. Uh, but you can see you can get some really explosive plays against cover three. Another good play uh, in the dink and dunk variety uh, is going to be the PA comebacks. So this play here is another good man or zone concept. So we'll go and pick that. Then we're just going to go random. Uh, we'll keep going random three, four. This play here, your man beater is going to be the comeback, the X route. Your zone beater is going to be the play that I'm going to create. That's going to be dragging the B route or putting them on an in route. It's really up to you, but I like dragging them. That's going to be your zone concept. The B route is going to be a check down against man or zone, but the a, it's going to create a zone beater concept with the A route. So that's pretty much how you're going to read that. So if you have a man, like here we have a zone. You can see the uh, the drag route pulls the coverage down or, you know, that's really all you're reading. So you really have a high-low route concept with the A route and the B route, but you also have it with the X route and the Y route, the tight end and the, I'm sorry, the fullback and the the slant the slot receiver um so there's really a couple different things you can do here here you can see i don't know what that was i, I might have been a man coverage with no safety help uh, as you can see the uh you know that could beat multiple things so since you have a high low concept on both sides you have one with the x route and the y route one with the a route and the b route you really want to split the field pre-snap you want to have an idea of where you're going ahead of time uh so you don't have to be trying to read too much so basically to me the better one's the tight end and the drag uh and i would say that the x routes a really good check down but it's really based off of like spacing pre-snap like right here they're giving a lot of spacing underneath so i could just take it to the uh the running back you know just kind of try to read spacing if you can read the defense that's going to be the first read but the second read would be spacing need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more link in the description below